object of honor and uh, it's been a blessing, hasn't it been? It's been good. We've learned a great deal about honor, which is actually faith in action. Uh, last Sunday, we learned about honoring spiritual relationship and one of such is the relationship that we have with uh, believers or our brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's a spiritual one, and uh, we learned how our Lord Jesus placed much premium on those relationships, that is, those who have believed him and those who also have God as their common father. Uh, he had earthly connection uh, with people who were his earthly brothers and, of course, mother. But we saw him in Matthew chapter 12 when he was spending time with his disciples and then his biological family came standing outside wanting his attention. Uh, his comment about the situation was instructive when he said that those who are listening to him then were his mother and brothers. And um, that will offend many people who exalt natural things about supernatural things. Therein lies a very important lesson for us that the relationship that we have found ourselves in in the Lord is superior in many ways more than a natural relationship. In fact, it is a super natural relationship and the super before it means that it must be given preference uh, in our dealings uh, here on earth. And uh, uh, we learned a great deal about that. I went on to learn some of the ways we can honor people. Uh, mention about 12 or 13 ways we can honor people, including believers in the house of the Lord. And as believers, we must not be caught exalting, esteeming natural things above supernatural things, especially relationships. All that we are studying in this series is that everything that we have is in Christ Jesus, and Christ is a man. And here on earth, everything that we need is already given to us by God in Christ Jesus. If it is in Christ Jesus who is a man, and I came to tell you that it is also hidden in many, many men here on earth who also carry Christ. You understand? All things that pertain to life and godliness are already given to us in the man Jesus Christ. Now, that man indwells us. That man lives in the believer. Beloved, the Bible said that Jesus, or God, is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And we must understand that here on earth, having received him as our Lord and Savior, we have become his brethren. We have become part of his family. He is our brother. God has become our father. He is our brother. And the one sitting next to you is your brother. And when we are submitted to him as Lord, the Bible says that he has made us gods. Small g. And you have to be careful how you treat us because he indwells us or we carry him. And so when you treat us with honor in faith, you are acknowledging the principle of faith and by doing that, you can receive every blessing that God intends for us to have. And I tell you that they are hidden in men that when you honor, when you treat with deep respect and admiration, you are putting weight on them. And what honor does simply is that it puts a divine weight. It puts divine pressure on the blessing, the grace, and the anointing, and anything good that God has put in, in men. We have this treasure of God in earthen or weak vessels. Some are in strangers. Some are in our parents. Some are in believers. And when we learn to treat human beings with dignity, honor, 
deep admiration for the Lord's sake. We position ourselves in faith every day to be recipients of anything that God has for us. And that is essentially what we are looking at in this series. And uh, tonight, we are looking at, this is part six. We'll be looking at honoring the elderly, leaders and principles. Honoring the elderly, leaders and principles. We start with the elderly. We learned in 1 Peter 2.17, the anchor scripture for this series, that honor all men. We must honor all men. So we started with strangers. Of course, we started with God. We went to strangers. We came to our parents. We are talking about spouses. And of course, uh, we have spoken about believers. And tonight, we want to talk about the elderly in Penifor, and Merwa, Hallelujah. Now, the elderly, uh, one verse that I want to bring as an admonition about the elderly and how we ought to treat them is found in Leviticus chapter 19, the verse number 32. Leviticus chapter 19, the verse number 32. I want it in the New King James. And then we go to the NLT and the Amplified. Over here, the Bible says, You shall rise before the gray headed. And honor the presence of an old man. And fear your God. I am the Lord. It is not for anything at all that when accomplishment, the elderly men of authority enter into a place we stand. It is for no reason why. There's a reason why in our church, when we are reading the Bible, we stand. We stand in order of the ancient of days. The I am that I am who became a man, who is the word of God. When we are reading Bible reading time, we stand in recognition to whom we know the word we are reading is. The word coming to us that we are reading literally from the written revealed word is the word of God. And the word became flesh. That is Jesus. So when we are reading Bible, we stand to honor in honor of the word. Hallelujah. Who was before creation and who is? Hallelujah. None is older and wiser than the word of God. Who is Jesus? Who was with God before the beginning? So when it's time to read the Bible, it is the reason why we stand. We rise. When you go to court and the judge enters, court rise on the day, on your wedding day, rising and standing is a sign of honor. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your presence, your accomplishment. We acknowledge your, your power, your sovereignty, your dominion, and all that you are and represent. So we stand. So we are here and an important person enters. We stand over here. The Bible is admonishing us that when somebody has gray hair, that is white hair, and somebody is aged, we rise in their presence to give them honor. Honor finds expression in many ways. Like I said, we have learned in this series how we address people, our posture when we are talking to them, and our posture when we are listening to them, and how we, we treat them, how we talk about them in public, how we talk about them in, in our uh, closet or, or privately, all contribute to honor. Over here, in the presence of the elderly, we don't sit, we rise, or sometimes we rise and we bow, paying homage that the person has lived long. Just because they've been around for a longer time, than you, and they are graying in their presence. That's the way we conduct ourselves to demonstrate honor. In the Amplified NLT or TPT, it is rendered this way. Stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God, I am the Lord. Fear your God, I am the Lord. He is, he is instructing us to honor the aged or the elderly He's saying that fear God. Doing that 
It's a demonstration of our fear of the Lord. It is wisdom. For wisdom is the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it is wisdom to acknowledge the aged. At least for staying around for, it's not easy to be around for a long time. Just because whether they are, they are educated, whether they are poor, gray hair is not easy to gray. Hallelujah. What they have survived and what they have been through to gray alone, no matter who you are, you have to respect them. So I can say, opening new fear. We used to be a society of honor that practice honor so much. You can even say opening, opening picture any fear. We elderly people deserve honor. Whether they have lived a foolish long life or not, the Bible didn't say here that rise before the wise, gray-headed. Just because they have gray, we honor them. And the rising, you put your hand behind them, and it it sets the tone for you to treat them well. Hallelujah. If you cannot stand, you prostrate. You do something to demonstrate and that I'm acknowledging that you have lived longer than I have lived. And you have done something I haven't done. I don't know whether I can live that long, but I am honoring what you have achieved to at least survive this long. We need to uh, treat our elders with respect. And like I said here, uh, one of the days in preaching, our society used to practice this until recently when, I mean, these days, in, in public transport, we used to allow them to sit. But these days, you can see them. And some, when they are walking about people, I mean, somebody must help them to go to wherever they are going. They, they, they don't need to join queues. They don't need to join queues anywhere. All these things are honor. When a woman is carrying a baby, and they say they, they should jump a queue. You know, our society, no, no. Yeah, I came here before. Why are you letting the pregnant nursing mothers? You, we, I, I, I mean, it is just on a one day to be your turn. It is not easy to carry a baby. So when you go to the hospital, go to anywhere people are queuing, we honor the aged. We go to a barbering shop, and an elderly person comes after you. You sit down and say, go after me. So you sit down and they cut. They are coming to cut gray hair. You don't, you don't want to sit to see gray hair being cut and falling down. You say, God, meet one day, come and get. I can cry into a team, you know. We call bank. Anywhere you go, you see an elderly person. Give them preferential treatment over your own comfort. If you want to gray. Stand up. You should rise before the gray-headed. And honor the aged. And you shall fear God with profound reverence. That is one of the ways we show reverence to God. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 29, the wisdom, although, let me see, there can be young men who are wise, and there can be old men who are foolish. That is true. You see, Obanian Safo, you ever know be up in Kwasiati. I said, Oh, it is true. But usually, when people gray, they have acquired wisdom and some experience that has made them wise. And you cannot, you cannot downplay the wisdom that they carry. They have been through things you are yet to be through, and they can show you a thing or two that can save you a lot of mistakes and errors. In your life, the glory of the young man is their physical strength, and the honor of the honor, say honor, of aged men, of course, women, is their gray hair representing wisdom and experience. Gray hair represents wisdom and experience, and so when you rise, you are giving honor to what the gray hair represents. Hallelujah. Yeah. But if you are born like my son or some of my sons over here, when you grow, when you grow up, you see gray hair on your, on your, thankfully, all bald men, at least your, 
you will see from your nose or somewhere, at least, your beard, gray hair. Amen. One day, I saw a video of an elder, one of the most respected men of God alive. He was, he was, uh, in 2015, he was given a prophetic direction and uh, it's one of the errors that he has made. Uh, he has started apologizing for a few. Maybe one day he will apologize for that one. And the whole church, over 20,000 people came to church and everybody came to church with a comb. And he instructed all of them to comb their hair. And there was an instruction that if you comb your head forward, if you comb your head backwards, you are combing all bad, bad luck. They comb their head backwards. Ah, he said, all bad luck is gone. And uh, he said, after that, he said, they should comb it hair forward. Do you, you are combing your head into your breakthrough. Forward, a lot of prophetic directions. And I was watching the video, and I was just asking myself, and he said, when he finished, he said they should keep the, the comb. And God gave him that instruction to give them, and he said that the next time they are going for interview or any job, they should use the comb to comb them. They should make sure that they shouldn't lose the comb. If they lose the comb, they have lost their life. So keep the comb. I was looking at the thing, and the whole church, they were happy, and they were combing. And every about 20,000 people had a comb. And I, it just occurred to me that, how about the bald men in the church? How, how would they comb their bad luck away? And how would they comb their destiny forward? And when they are going for interview, how about the Rasta people who don't comb their hair like my brother? Anyway, that was just where they were. I look at it and say, hey, Charlie, God can give an instruction and some people will be cut off like that. And it is not their fault that they are bored. It's God who made the bored. Anyway, so bald head, it's a, it's a sign. So you ask, it is not, it is not the person, but what the gray is representing, wisdom and experience. You are just giving honor. You have passed through things. You don't know how to eat bread and sugar and pepper and eat all these things for 80 years and still be alive. They have done well. We stand and we honor them and we treat them with a lot of honor. We give to them. We hold their back. We listen to them. We treat them with honor. At least very soon they'll be leaving this earth. They should leave this earth with some honor. Hallelujah. All right, so that's about the elder. Let's talk about leaders, appointed leaders, government officials, and all of that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Are you learning something tonight? Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of men. For the Lord's sake, we do these things, we submit and we obey, not for the people's sake, beloved. It's not even for our sake. It is for the Lord's sake. Whether to the king as supreme kings, MPs, CEOs, our bosses, accountants, men in position, ministry leaders, home fellowship leaders, and once the person is an authority, next verse, to the king as supreme or to the governors, Governance, government officials, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. So people, policemen, people, the, the policeman standing there is a man in authority. He's wearing the police, the, 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 the uniform on behalf of the IGP, the Ghana Armed Forces, I mean the president and all of that. Men appointment to stand in places. They punish evildoers. This is talking about the military, the police, the immigration, all these people. They are, they are governors. Talking about government officials that have been put in authorities, organizations to enforce law. God is the one that instituted order. Now listen to me. They may not be correct, but we obey them. We honor them. We submit to them because it is God who put them there. And it is God who who created their office? It is God who, who 
appointed the one who appointed them. Hallelujah. Next verse. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. It is the will of God for us to submit to those not true which are governed. And whether they are corrupt or not, whether they are corrupt or you cannot say that your MP is corrupt, he hasn't done the road. So when you see him, you will not greet him. You are in disorder. You are dishonoring an authority. Yes, it is bad for them to, to do the to, not to have done the road. But it is not, you see, it is, he has to answer. He will answer to the one who put him there. For you, you are instructed to honor them. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Great. Very, very important. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Let every soul be subject. Subject, no just say, I am ranked below you because somebody has placed you over me. Or God placed somebody over me and that person has placed you over me. God placed the pastor over me. The pastor has played this one over me. I'm in this department. I am in this constituency. God placed the president over us and the president has placed you over me. And I'm subject to you. It's a military term over there. To the governing authorities. Governing authorities in our schools, in our workplaces, and everywhere we have. It is God who set authorities, beloved. It is God who set authority. And it is God, it is God who created the office. It is God who created the office of a mother. The office of a mother is not man's idea. Fatherhood is not man's idea. It is God who created it. So even, even if there's a foolish or a stupid or an irresponsible father or mother, the one who created the office is the one we are honoring. Hallelujah. God created the office of a father. But it is not God who inspired a, a person who is not married to go and sleep with another person to become a father. But fatherhood and family is God's idea. So the guy has made a mistake. He's irresponsible. He doesn't have a job. He has slept with somebody. He has become a father. It doesn't mean that disrespect the person. Because he's standing in an office that God created. He may, he may have gotten there illegally. Prematurely. But it doesn't mean that you should disrespect the person. Because he's an authority. And he's God's representative. Do you understand? That is what is the next verse. For there is no authority except from God. Give me NIV or Amplified NLTTP, one of my favorite uh, modern translations. For there is no authority except from God, granted by his permission and sanction. TPT or NLT. So, for there there can be no authority in the universe except by God's appointment, which means that every authority that exists has been instructed by God or he has permitted it. Do you understand? Good. And so we honor them. It is God who created the office. So Moses is doing the work by him. God sent Moses over the people. Moses is doing it. This is found in um, Exodus chapter 18. God, God has called Moses. Moses is doing the, Lord, the, the work alone. And God said that Moses, you can't do the work alone. Appoint people. God appointed Moses and gave Moses the power of attorney to also appoint people. And Moses appointed people so that if you disrespect who Moses has appointed, you are respecting Moses and for that matter you are respecting who? Yes. So it is God who set, who created the office. And so we must honor them. Hallelujah. And, and, and in our country right now, in our, in our world right now, people can, you can, people can call the phone, serial callers, and they can insult. Yesterday, I mean, a mommy was telling me that, have I heard a certain useless song that somebody has composed about a president of Ghana, and they are using profane words to say, short president. Or your old papa and can be on there. Or your one class, your papa classmate can be on there. I am one year, ne, Jimmy, ne, Nimdia, ye, Nikakra, and a dear fra, and a Maukasa Sano. 
nipa no ya crop na nye nya onyame na di ni si ho god will deal with them we he said we should honor them and we will honor them do you understand it is not for you to go and correct them if god hasn't told you to correct them the one who put him there will deal with them short president did they did they did they did they, they call them without this the way the fact that you think he has filled as a president or an mp or as a accountant or as a ceo doesn't give you the permission to treat them with its honor or contempt careful that thing you haven't been that person before do you know how you'll be if you become a president careful i told you the last time you see you don't know what it means to be a bad president it is not easy even being a bad president eh? you think it's easy to be an irresponsible father it's not easy. You know what they are going through? You know the battles they are fighting? So, honor them because God set them there. Hallelujah. Respect them. Obey their commandments. Hallelujah. Many times you forget. So, Titus wrote in Titus 3.1. Remind them. The whole of Titus chapter 2 is instruction for God living to believers. He gave a lot of instructions and it is continuing in the verse 3, chapter 3, and he said, remind them because sometimes we forget. Remind them to be subject to rulers, rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 When God calls men, he gives them the idea, the instruction to call other men. Peter Peter You dare not. Once he's chosen and once he's called, he has anointing. He may be unpolished. He may have temper issues, but he can pray for the dead to come back. He can cast out demons. Be careful not to treat Peter as a fisherman, the man that God has called to follow him. Hallelujah. Now he's a fisher of men, but I need to receive him as a fisher of men. Otherwise, you will get fish and go to hell. But he can save your soul. Hallelujah. But see then, remind them. Other translations will say, put them into remembrance. Because many times you forget. You have, um, you have money more than them. Doesn't mean you should disrespect them. You are educated more than them. Doesn't mean, doesn't give you the audacity to dishonor them. You know a little more than them. Or they are wrong sometimes. Doesn't mean that you can disregard them. Remind the people to respect the government and be law-abiding. I know sometimes it's difficult in Ghana, right? You pay the tax, ah, they don't use for the right thing, so you won't pay the tax. We give honor to whom honor is due. You give unto Caesar what is due Caesar. Hallelujah. Honor to whom honor is due. Money to whom money is due. Power to whom power is due. Hallelujah. So God appoints kings. We have seen there. Remind them because they forget. Every day remind them. It is true that God created the office of a king and the office of an MP, the office of whatever, but sometimes men can force themselves. There. Like the example I made about the father. He has gone to sleep with somebody. He has raped somebody to become a father. So kings and authorities Sometimes people can get there legally, but we still obey them if they are in line with the word of God. If they are out of, if they are, they are against the word of God, we don't obey them. But once they are in line with the word of God, we obey them. So in, in, in Hosea chapter 8 verse 4, they, they said kings, you see, this is quite contrary to uh, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 13, the verse uh, number uh, one that says that 
Uh, there is no king. Every authority is appointed by God, right? Look here. God created the office. And God chooses people to go into the office. But sometimes, like the people of Israel, we can all go and choose Saul and come and put him in the office God has created. You see, for there is no authority except by God. But God has created the office. But we can go ahead of God and go and put somebody there. But once you put the person there, we will bear the consequences. Hallelujah. For <laughs> there's no authority except from God. But now look at Hosea chapter 8 verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. God has distanced himself from them. They set up kings, but not by me. And that happens a lot because we don't pray, we don't consult for our selfish interests, we vote for people and all of those things all over the place. They made princes, but I did not acknowledge them. It means that sometimes people can get there or people can occupy these positions and they can be against God. When they are against God, we don't obey them, we don't submit to them. But even that there's a way we treat them. The fact that they are against God and they are anti-Christ and they are against God doesn't mean that you should disrespect them because they are standing in an office that God created. God created the office. We filled it with an irresponsible person. So because they are representing God, they must be accorded with some honor so that even if we don't agree with them, I told that honor sometimes is displayed in even if you disagree with them, you have to explain and you have to know how to tell them. You have to know how to disobey them. You, have, you can disobey in honor. Hallelujah. So when we can't obey them because they are not from God or they are wayward, we still treat them with honor. And over here, I'll pause here and talk about pastors. For many people who think that they know the word of God, they are in a church, they think they pastor, their pastor have taught them so well, especially people in churches like this, where we emphasize the New Testament and you preach the word of faith and the gospel is expounded so much and you go out and you find many pastors who are not preaching the gospel. You didn't call them and you are not their judge. And they have something you can always never, like I said, experience alone. It is also not easy to preach the false gospel for a long time. You see, many times, you see, like I said, experience. Some people, you see, the things people carry, it's not just the word that they are speaking. Somebody has done ministry for 30 years. The fact that he's not preaching like your pastor or the truth doesn't mean that you should dishonor them. They are standing in an office. They are called of God. As for the doctrine and the wrong thing they are preaching, God will deal with them. And you can pray for them. But the office, you cannot disrespect them. Because they have something that you don't have. What have you done continuously for 30 years? So that experience, that grace to be able to do something, even when it is something wrong, to do it continuously for 30 years, that, that rate, that great, that consistency, that you have a problem with procrastination. And somebody, you may have a leader who may not be so good in something, but they have some. That is why God will say, go to the ant and go and learn. What can a man learn from an animal? Go to the ant and go and learn. You can learn from the ant, but you cannot learn from the, the bishop or the prophet. or the, the One day they will say something correct, but even if they don't say anything correct, when they stand there, just because they have been married for 18 years, and they are speaking to you. Some, if you honor them and receive them in the office of a man of God, you may not receive what they are, what they are preaching, but there's something in them. If you put weight on them, if you receive them like a man of God, maybe there will be a need in your life that is not exactly what they are preaching, but it is something you lack in your life. Consistency, resilience, determination, loyalty, faithfulness. That can come upon you by listening to them. Especially if they are not blaspheming 
against the Lord and they are not teaching something contrary to the, to the grace of our Lord Jesus. The fact that they are not preaching grace doesn't mean we cannot learn from them. Do you understand? Yes, so there may be kings that God hasn't set up, but God can use them and you don't disobey them because you are educated than them or you know more than them. Hallelujah. Like I said, it's not easy to even be a bad example for a long time. So, you honor their office. You disregard their failures. You disregard their, their shortcomings and their flaws. And you receive their office. Hallelujah. You receive them in the name of a prophet. And God can use them to be a blessing to you. So, Daniel, example, uh, Daniel in, in, in Daniel chapter uh, 3, from the verse 16 to 18. So, Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, want them to do something. They have come at a place where, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, answered and said to the king, they are talking to a king. You see the way they address the king. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. That is a, an, an, an order from a king to do, but no, continue. How you disagree and disobey and not submit is also important. If, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Explain why you are disobeying. Explain why you cannot obey. Don't just out of pride and arrogance disregard them. Do not attend and in your heart is because you feel bigger than. Explain, make your case clear. Daddy, and I say, elderly person, Abra, old lady, say, say, explain. And let them feel honored in their office. Hallelujah. They are explaining. God, but even God has not delivered us from this burning furnace, this fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. Oh, king. Nebuchadnezzar, your friend Nebuchadnezzar, your son, friend, a king. Do you understand? Say, so, oh, king. I said, oh, we will not do it. We know better. You when you become a king. We are, we are, did, 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 did. no, 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 no. Look at the verse 18. They are treating the man with honor because he is against God's word, but he's in an authority. But if, but if not, let it be known to you, oh, king. You see the way they are dressing? King, sir, your majesty, his, I mean, your honor, yeah, your honor, your, your honor, please respectfully. Do you understand? Because of where they are standing. That we do not serve your gods, nor would we worship the, the, the golden image which you have set up. They are explaining. So sometimes we disagree because they may not be appointed of God or they may be contrary to God. Peter who instructed us in 1 Peter to subject to all authorities. Look at him in, 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 in Acts chapter 4 verse 18 to 19. They said that they shouldn't preach. But he said, hey, 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 you can't not say preach. You rather obey God other than man. But you have to explain. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. This is Antigua. They are authorities, they are leaders, they are appointed, they are governors, they are whatever, but they are against the spread of the gospel. And cast in terms of submission, to them, because, oh, okay, they say, oh, shouldn't go have evangelism, but they said, but Peter, say, but Peter and John answered to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. You judge. You judge. Can not reason together? Why are you saying this? They, see, they, are reason. they don't just say anything and just disobey. Hallelujah. Yes. We, when you see greatness, when you see an old man, when you see somebody who has set up a company, somebody who has set up a shop, eh? Provision, who started to own your business there? Obia started a provision shop. Obia watch a business 20 years. 
Obiaton Koko or Jan Shinesu, 18 years. You think it is easy to sell cocoa for 18 years? He is a CEO of that cocoa enterprise. She deserves some honor. Hajia deserves some honor. Hallelujah. Beloved, you see, our certificate, the grace of God, the Holy Ghost, will bring us before great men. But it is the honor we place on them, no matter how they look, is what will transfer greatness from them to us. It is what to make us attract the greatness. When the grace of God and our certificate and all that we have and our connections, the Bible said the gift of a man will bring him before great men. But when we get before the great men, entrepreneurs, uh, 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 important people, how do you talk? How do you stand? How do you address them? How do you call them? How do you speak? And what is your posture? It has a lot to do. Hallelujah. When you see greatness, you must admire greatness. Many people don't admire greatness. You think about this, your koi call. That's why I said that. You see, in the Old Testament, everybody knew their level. Because the, the Holy Ghost was taught in everybody. He came upon people and left. You can't talk to a prophet anyhow. You can't treat anybody anyhow. The, the people that did the, the Levite, people were selected. And Obiad in the name, do you understand? But in the New Testament where the Holy Ghost is not everybody, we are all the wise of God. You can, you can easily be walking in this honor and not acknowledge and celebrate and discern people and reward them for their distinctive difference. I said honor is honoring, discerning and celebrating or rewarding people for their distinctive differences because of God. When ye and Nuntinu, you have to. Do you know how to do house? Do you know how to do Kose? Do you know how to do Kose, Harriet? But you know how to do go Jolof. So when you see a Kose seller, she has a difference. She knows something. You can't, you can't be a security man. Me, I can't be a security man. So I don't have the right to dishonor them. That is his difference. He has a grace for that. And you must respect them. Hallelujah. Some people, you think that being a pastor is easy. Some of you, you think that being this, doing, doing anything is easy. Umbushi, who, obia, who, no one, obia, like, you, everybody's your friend, everybody's your party. In this life, you can play, you can do this. You don't admire anybody. You don't let anybody feel good. You don't tell anybody that, hey, Charlie, I wish I can do what you can do. I admire, how do you do it? Let people feel like they are Better in an area than you. you never do that. And so you are inside, you live an average life. When you, when you stand before great men, and you stand before kings, and you stand be, be, before people with specialized skills and ability and experience and longevity, you must submit. You must bow. You must not have a posture of wanting to rub shoulder or indifference posture. You know, sometimes you are just not disrespecting them, but Charlie, I mean, uh, you can sing. You can sing. Say, hey, like, wow. He tell you, when you are singing, like, just, like, you have to have honor and treat people and celebrate them. Especially men in our, you think it is easy to stand for MP and campaign in the whole constituency. Onye class prefect, onye yida, company overseer, grand swag prefect, Post be be all life money. Nah, I sorry cry a chip post I won't pay. But OBC, Obey, MC, DC, what do you know? You are even hiding your political affiliation. If I say who is NDC one, you can't raise your hand. Who is MP? You can't you can't even disclose your party. You think it is easy for somebody to go and sit on TV and raise whatever it is and say, Me, I am NDC and I am I want to be there. Me you think it is easy. You think it is easy. You lack that boldness. You lack something that the person has. When you honor him, you can attract that. What you honor, you attract. What you dishonor, you repair. You think it is easy? What is your party? You like one party, but you can't say it. You think it is easy to say it and to, and to say that for, for the rest of your life. Everybody know that you are new force. You don't like MPP, you don't like NDC. You think it is easy. 
It's not easy. So easy to be a mother. So easy to be a pastor. You can't be a pastor. You know, we are is we uh oh no pecasantia. You just trivialize, you don't think deeply about what people do. You don't put weight on what they have done. It's a gift. It's a gift. You know, you will not go anywhere. Anyway, so this honor is dangerous. It will block the door of favor. It will deny you many privileges. Instead of working in this honor, pray for them. Pray for people. Pray for them. Pray for leaders. Listen, they may have flaws. They may have weaknesses. They may not be teaching or preaching like you want, but you have not been certified and approved and vetted to be an officer to judge them. You understand? But let me show you what you owe them. First Timothy 3. Sorry, first Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, say first of all, that, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. The next one, all men. That is popular stand. All leaders and all prophets, all kings, all leaders, all politicians, all pastors, anybody in opposition are all men. Pray for them as all men. But when you finish, verse 2, because you are not the same. Then he said, all men, but for kings and all who are in authority. Many times, they get wrong, they go wrong because you don't pray for them. They go wrong because many have neglected this duty from the Lord. This instruction for them. We don't pray for them. But you see, the first beneficiaries of this prayer is us. When we do that, we live a quiet and a peaceable life. In all godliness and reverence. So we hate ourselves. How many people, how many churches, how many Christians are bended with praying for Ghana and our leaders and men in authority? They need prayer. Hallelujah. This is what we have to do for them, not to correct them. Hallelujah. You pray for them first. And then in prayer, the Lord will teach you how to correct them and when to correct them or who to go and talk to so that the person will correct them. You didn't appoint them. Hallelujah. What does honor do? What honor does is, like I said, it puts pressure, a divine weight on whatever they carry, and then you can also be a partaker of it. Honor actually is a loud statement for more to attract what they have. Hallelujah. Of course, we are also not saying that uh, go and listen to every man of God. Every man of God has something for you to listen to. Eh? That's in me that no, no, no. Careful. You know better. Hallelujah. We are just teaching you a principle that you don't go judging them and rubbishing everything they have done just because they, they said one wrong thing. Hallelujah. All right. So there are principles also to honor. I have some five minutes and I have, may just mention the principles. So we honor the elderly. We have learned today. We also honor uh, uh, leaders or government or, uh, officials, or governors, and authority. But there are principles also that we have to honor. There are many of them. I just want to talk about three of them tonight. The principle of sowing and reaping. When we want to read uh, Genesis chapter eight, verse twenty-two. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time will not will, will not will not will not cease. There's always seed time and harvest time. There's, there's giving and receiving. It is, a, it is a law. It's a principle that, that has an attached blessing. Now listen. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and you will live long. You have to obey that and that obedience is faith. That obedience is honor so that the blessing in it will be yours. Beloved, if you want to do well, Sowing and reaping is a principle that you must believe in and you must honor. Hallelujah. There are many principles in the Bible. Now, like do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Treating men well. But over here, listen, in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 2, 
There's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. There's a time to gather. It is a principle that we don't only honor people. We don't only honor of offices. We don't only honor places. We don't only honor relationships. But there are principles that we honor in our Like I said, honor is just faith in action. That God has said it. There's a blessing attached to it. I want the blessing and I obey the Lord. There's a time to be born. There's a time, there's a time to plant and there's a time. It's a principle God has said. And these ones, uh, they are applicable to everyone. Uh, no, these ones are not exclusive to to the church or believers only. It's a principle. If you have corn and don't put it on in the ground, you cannot harvest. You cannot harvest. Do you understand? So it's a it's a principle that you have to honor. You have to respect. You have to obey. You have to take an action on in honor to reap the benefits. Sowing and reaping is a principle that we honor, and. If you speak in tongues and you are born again, you are baptized and you eat communion and you don't honor this principle, there's a harvest. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. There's a harvest that you miss because you are not sowing. You are not giving. Hallelujah. Great. Of course, it is very similar to giving and receiving. In, in, in Galatians chapter 6. What is in Galatians chapter 6 verse Verse, uh, verse, verse 9. Galatians says 9. Don't do not be ready in doing good. For in due season you will reap if you don't lose heart. It's a principle. God has set it. Anybody who applies himself to it, no matter who you are, godly or godly, it's not so in a reaping, giving and receiving. If you do it, it you will get it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You, if you don't lose heart, there's a season. Their life is in seasons and turns. It's a principle that we honor. Do you understand? Just like honoring your father and honoring your mother, that your day will be long. It's a principle. Another principle is hard work. Hard work is also a principle. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 8. The Lord, the Lord, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The Lord gives power for us to get wealth. And all of the ways he gives us the power, he gives us ideas, he gives us a job, and we have to work hard. We have to work hard. Hallelujah. We need to work hard. We need to work very, very, very hard. And remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to make wealth. Gives you a job, he gives you an idea, he gives you a head, he gives you a mind, and you have to work. Hallelujah. In the chapter 28, the verse number 8, over here, the Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hand to do. It's a principle. It means that if you set your hand to do nothing, zero times zero is what? So it's a principle of hard work. The Bible says, seeth a man diligent in his work. You understand? Eh? In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, hard work do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before. It's, it's a principle. If you do this, you will get it. If you do it long enough, you will get it. It's assured. He will stand before kings. But when you stand before a king, you must treat the king with honor. When you stand before the king, you must treat the king with some dignity. He will stand before kings. He will not stand before men. men. Hard work. Sowing and reaping. Giving and receiving our principles that we we honor for increase, for multiplication, for productivity. If you don't honor them, just like honoring our parents, there are consequences. I pray that we will learn how to. Give honor to whom honor is due. Principles that honor is due. Elderly men and women that honor is due. And authorities and, and, and leaders among us and wherever we find ourselves that honor is due. And I pray that whatever blessing there is in honoring men, may you never miss it. May the God who has said according to his word in the book of Samuel that I will honor anybody who honor me. And I, I would disdain or despise or dishonor those who despise me. May he honor you. 
and may you live an honorable life and may you never lack honor in the day that you need honor in Jesus name and much more may he grant you understanding and may he give you discernment many times what makes us live a life of dishonor is the lack of discernment I pray that the Lord will cause us to discern the differences in people, in relationships, and places, and even principles that we will apply ourselves in faith to them and get every blessing that is in it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to bless you. Learn something tonight? Are you blessed tonight?